<clears throat> Hello. Welcome to... How do I work this microphone? Hello. Welcome to Blurt Box. This is an animation channel where I film myself animating stuff, designing stuff, rigging stuff, and then I edit it together and talk nonsense for 12 minutes. <laughs> So this is less tutorial and more watch along with some commentary on top. Um, yeah, just a bit of fun and we'll see what happens. So I am a professional 2D Toon Boom animator. I've worked on projects for Disney Channel, Nickelodeon, Netflix, Warner Brothers, Universal and CBeebies. And I've also done some freelance character design and animation. So, for this first episode, I'm going to rig the mascot for this channel. A rig is a 2D puppet that an artist builds for an animator to animate. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Okay, first things first, let's open up Harmony. And I'm going to go over the different windows and tools I'm going to use in this video to rig my character. And I will go into more detail about each tab and tool so sit tight. Alright, so we're going to open up Harmony now and I'm going to show you a couple of things in Harmony, the stuff I'm going to use in this video. Alright, over here is the node view. Above that is the color, tool properties and library tab. Then over here is the different art layers. And then over here is deformers. And on the left is a bunch of tools you can use to create art. And here's the camera window. This is where you'll be animating. Okay. So I've designed this character. This is the mascot for my channel. Uh, I think his name's Blurt. I'm not too sure. Maybe Mr. Box. <laughs> I don't know yet. But here he is. Ain't he beautiful? <laughs> so I will do some videos about my character design process. Uh, maybe that'll be in future videos. I don't know yet. We'll see. So I save my design as a JPEG and then pour it into Harmony. And then, you know what, before I get into that, let's talk about the node view. The node view is a visual representation of your rig in Harmony. It's a hierarchical structure and it's all the different pieces and drawings that you're gonna use to animate. So I'll get into more detail about that later on probably probably not actually <laughs> it's a bit boring to explain anyway so here's my guy uh okay so i've imported the jpeg into harmony and i'm just going to start drawing on top of the design piece by piece um and here i'm just drawing the face so the handy thing about importing your character design is that you can just draw right on top of it and you can use the dropper tool to take colors from it and just start laying down the base colors for your character. So Harmony has a bunch of different pencil textures you can use. It's a good idea to use pencils for your line. The pencil allows you to adjust the line more easily as opposed to a paintbrush. And as Harmony is vector based, You'll be doing that a lot. So I'm just going to fast forward here. The amount of footage I recorded for this video was about three hours long. So I had to cut it down to about 15 minutes. It took forever. But yeah, this is sped up. You can just see how many nodes and drawing nodes you're going to be adding in the node view. All right, so here I am starting to work on the eyes. I do actually change the eyes later on, but this will give you a good idea of how to build an eye for a character. So I'm just laying out the shapes and I'm choosing the pencil texture. I kind of flip back and forth here, deciding on what kind of texture I want to use for the character. I go for like a rough, I go for a rough textured pencil look. It just gives the line work a bit more crunchiness and it makes it feel kind of less flashy, I guess, if that makes sense. For the people here, I'm using an untextured line. I don't want furry looking eyeballs, so. And then I'm gonna paint it. A sort of dark, dark gray. All right, so I have that eye figured out and I'm gonna just duplicate it in the node view. 
So I just copy and paste those drawing nodes and the pegs. And then we have a second eyeball. Look at that. All right, so I'm just finishing off the eyeballs now. I'm getting the eyeball color down. I chose a light gray for that because when I put the eye highlight in, it will make that pop. All right, let's talk about colors. Tutorial time. So colors are used a lot in rigs, all the time actually. I'm just gonna do a quick demo on how you set one up and what it does. So here you have the square and the circle, they're separate shapes, and I'm going to go up to the node library, pull out a color node and drop it in the node view. The color node has a mask thread point and a regular thread point, and you want to attach one shape into the regular thread point and attach another thread to the mask thread point. You can tell which one's which because the mask thread point has a little Phantom of the Opera look at mask. Yeah. Okay, so in this case the square is acting as the mask, so it's cutting out the circle. And you can invert the cutter, so the square actually reveals the circle when they intersect. Like so. Isn't that magic? <clears throat> Okay, with that information in mind, we're going to apply a cutter to the pupil, so whenever it goes outside the eyeball, it disappears. And the cutter has to be inverted. Wow. Check that out. <laughs> alright, alright, we have to focus here. So, now, I'm gonna speed this up because this video is taking way too long. So I'm filling out the rest of the body, doing the back bits and the side bits. They're all different colors, and I'm just taking the colors from the original JPEG that I have in the scene. And make sure you save often, as often as you can. Control S is your friend. Well, at least my friend. My only friend. Like the, the only friend I have in this world is... <laughs> so I'm saving this as blurt underscore box underscore man. And let's move on to the flappy bit that's attached to the head bit. I designed this piece in mind to have some overlapping action. Wait, no, secondary action. Wait, wait. Hold on a second. I've forgotten my animation principles. Right, let me just Google this. Overlapping animation. Overlapping action is a tool used by animators to emphasize the action. <laughs> I was right. So I designed Blurt with that little head flappy thing in mind to add some secondary action. Kind of like a bit of hair that can drag around when he's jumping up and down and having fun and stuff. And that's what secondary action is. It is an action that is on top of your main action. You know, a bag, maybe a scarf, a tie, that kind of stuff. Okay, so I'm starting to do the legs now. Uh, we're gonna get into deformers in a bit. But before that, let's talk about Art layers. So every drawing, oh, sorry. So every drawing node in Harmony has four layers. And if you click the drawing tab above the camera window, you can see the layers individually. So you have the line, the color, and the underlay art. And this is useful if you want to draw a clean line on top of your color art, as the line layer is always above the color layer. Yay! Okay, so I'm going in now and I am adding color to the legs and then I'll copy and paste it into the color layer and Hey presto, we have a leg Okay, so now I'm gonna start on the feet now. I have a really hard time drawing feet. I don't know what it is So make sure you use reference. So I had to really really look I spent 
hours looking for the perfect foot reference. Oh yeah, I like that one. Okay, so once you have your foot reference, I nailed it on the first try. Not. <laughs> it took me forever. It took me like 30 tries to try and get a bean-shaped foot. Anyways, there it is. Yeah, I think even Quentin Tarantino would be proud. Okay, so let's continue with the leg. <clears throat> okay, so what I want to happen is I want both the foot and the leg line art to disappear when they intersect each other. So I went to the node library and I pulled down a couple of line art nodes and what that is going to do is it's going to separate the line art from the drawing node so I can manipulate that. And I have it here, kind of, actually. Wait, hold on. How do I... I gotta plug that over here. Color art. Color art does the same thing as the line art node. It separates the color art from the drawing, so I can manipulate that by itself. But how do I... I need to get these lines to disappear when I plug... Hold on, let me try this again. Another cutter in there, and then I'll plug that. Nothing. Why? Hmm, I'm missing something here. This isn't right. I'm gonna start again. Okay, so plug the cutter in there and nope. Why is this not working? Oh, I got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> that took <laughs> that took forever. See, I did it. The lines are disappearing when they're intersecting. Beautiful. Oh my goodness, I'm ready for a nap. Okay, so now I'm just tightening up the foot to make it look more appealing. Um, yeah, and then we're gonna get into deformers. So deformers are one of those things that are all over TV quality rigs. In-house rigs are absolutely filled with deformers for good reason, because they're amazing. Yeah, so they're attached to everything. From the hair, to the eyes, to the torso, to whatever. I've even seen them in the ears. Performers are very, very, very important. I love them because they transform regular, boring, flat shapes to something that's malleable and something you can pose out to make more interesting. Alright, so here's the leg looking pretty and beautiful. I've added the pencil textures to the legs and the foot to give it that nice feel. <laughs> so let's add a deformer to this drawing node right here. Go up top and click on what I call the hammer and sickle. And then you start at the top or the anchor point and you draw down. And then you go to the other end of the shape and you draw up to draw the handles. And there you go. We have a deformer. So now I'm just checking to see how it looks and how it moves around. Yeah, it's all fine, it's working. Um, and now we're gonna do an envelope deformer on the foot. So click that hammer button again. And in a similar fashion, you apply the deformer around the shape. It's an envelope deformer. So it goes around the shape and you drag and drop for the handles. Yeah. Okay, so the foot's done. Hooray! Okay, so here's that leg done. I'm gonna copy and paste it. Basically duplicate it to create another leg to save myself building two legs. Because I'm lazy. I'm a lazy animator. No, I'm not. I'm smart. I'm a smart animator and this is what you got to do to get stuff done on time. Okay, we're just going to pull the second leg out that we just duplicated. And we're done for today. The build isn't done yet. Okay, in the next video, that's going to take me 4,000 million hours to edit. Uh, we're going to do the eyes 
No, we've done the eyes. What are we doing? The mouth, hands, and the arms. And then we're going to tighten everything up. And then I'm going to animate him. A couple of videos down the road. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm so tired. <laughs> A marathon. Ridiculous marathon. Why am I doing this? Thanks for watching.